the range of my Wi-Fi network absolutely sucked. The coverage was so bad that, especially when I was outside of the house, the fastest internet that I could get would be about one megabit per second download speed, which is, of course, awful. So something needed to change. So I had a whole load of options to increase the range of the Wi-Fi access point, but the one I ended up using was by changing the type of antenna that, that it uses. So most access points, most wireless access points, come pre-installed with some kind of omnidirectional antenna, including mine. So the antennas that are installed on the wireless access point are omnidirectional, which means that they emit and receive radio waves roughly equally in all directions. So you have your antenna that is positioned on the access point, and when it sends out information, when it sounds, sends out radio waves, those radio waves will travel away from the antenna in all directions, and the antenna will also receive radio waves from all directions. Which is great if your access point is located right in the centre of your house. It's not great if your access point is, oh, I don't know, located right next to a wall. Right, so you might want coverage inside your house, maybe inside your backyard, but you might not want coverage in front of your house on the street, right, because you don't use your internet there. So you don't want that power to be wasted on providing coverage on the street that you don't need anyway. You might actually want to use that power to get be better coverage in the backyard. Which is why, in some situations, it's nice to use a directional antenna. A directional antenna, as its name suggests, is a type of antenna that can actually be aimed in a specific way. So, for example, what you could do in, in this little schematic drawing is with a directional antenna, you could aim the antenna at your house so that you would get coverage in your house and perhaps your backyard, but not necessarily on the street in front of it. Now, because with a directional antenna, no energy is wasted on covering areas that don't need to be covered, we can also achieve a longer range. So these types of antennas can be used to increase the range of a wireless network in specific directions. And that's exactly what I was planning to do. So the type of directional antenna that I'm, I'll be using is the Yagi antenna. So a Yagi antenna looks like this is a very easy to construct type of directional antenna. It consists of a boom, which is basically some sort of stick that everything is mounted to, and some directors, which are passive or parasitic elements, a reflector, which is also a parasitic element, and then finally the driven element, which is the part of the antenna that is actually connected to the access point. The directors and the reflector are actually not connected to anything. They are passive elements that have the job of essentially guiding the radio waves from and towards the driven element. The driven element is actually the antenna. Those other parts that you see, they help, but they're not actually connected to anything. So then how do we build one of these things, right? Well, it all starts off with the design. We can't just start off building some sort of Yagi antenna because it needs to be fine-tuned for the specific frequency that the Wi-Fi network operates at. In my case, it's a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi network, so we'll be making a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi antenna. So in order to calculate the right dimensions, I used a program called Yagi Calculator. <laughs> That's a very original name, isn't it? So what you do in this program is you fill in the frequency, which is 2.4 gigahertz in my case, and then you fill in the, uh, the properties of the materials that you use. So how thick the wiring is and, and, and the boom and all of that. And then you basically press enter and it will calculate the dimensions for you. So I then took these dimensions the program gave me and I put them into this drawing that I made that will make it easier to construct the antenna. So the construction itself started off by cutting a piece of wood to the right size, after which I gave it a quick sand job to make sure that it wouldn't stab me. 
Next up, I took my ruler and pen again and marked exactly on this piece of wood where the elements of the antenna would be placed. Next, I took a drill and drilled a hole through every one of these crosses, except for the place where the driven element is going to be. The driven element is actually going to be mounted to the boom in a different way from the other elements. More about that later on. I needed to make the elements themselves, which I did by taking some nice, thick, easy to bend wire um, and basically cutting that to the right size pieces uh, according to my little drawing. After that I could simply insert them into the holes and glue them in position using some hot glue. The driven element was created by taking a longer piece of wire and folding it like so. This is called a folded dipole antenna. This uh, driven element was then mounted to the boom by putting it around it and then gluing it in place. So it doesn't get it doesn't actually get mounted through the boom like the other elements, but in, around it instead. Finally, I could also glue the reflector in position. So the antenna itself is now essentially done. Now comes the part where we actually connect the antenna to the wireless access point. So what I did is I took the remains of a regular antenna that I had from the wireless access point and I glued that to the boom of my Yagi antenna and then soldered the wires to the terminals of the Yagi antenna, so to the driven element. Now here's something very very important to keep in mind. It doesn't matter how you're going to mount your Yagi antenna, as long as those wires connecting the antenna to the to the transmitter or the receiver are as short as they can possibly be. These wires need to be incredibly short. In fact, I've made them slightly too long uh, myself. I have made them shorter later on off camera because they were in fact too long to be effective. At high frequencies like 2.4 gigahertz, the shortest piece of wire, like a five centimeter piece of wire, although it, sh it seems so short, is going to have a massive impedance, which means the power from your transmitter is not effectively going to reach the actual antenna itself. That's why the wires connecting the antenna to the uh, transmitter or receiver have to be incredibly short. Keep that in mind, please, because otherwise your antenna is not going to work. In my case, I really like the fact that we used the remains of this actual antenna from the access point because it allows us to very conveniently mount it onto the access point using the screw mounting mechanism. Right, so then it was time for some testing. So first of all, I set up the access point in its old config with two antennas because that's apparently for this access point the minimum amount of properly work. I tried it with one as well, but it just wouldn't do it. It needs two antennas for some reason, okay? So I set it up like this, went into the backyard, and here's what I got. Here, you can see with this little icon uh, on top of it, that is our network. So you can see it's on channel 13, and we are at around minus 80 decibels, as you can see here. It's on the minus 80 decibels signal strength. Alright, so then I could simply screw mount my new Yagi antenna onto the access point and off I went once again to see the results. So I have installed the Yagi antenna onto the wireless access point and you can see that in fact we are now at around minus 75 to sometimes minus 70 decibels um, instead of the minus 80 that we were at with the regular antenna. So the good news is that the Yagi antenna has significantly improved the signal strength out here in the backyard. The problem is that I do not think that it has improved it enough. Right, so you can see that this green network here, I don't know whose network that is, but it's performing about as well as our network, which means it is a source of interference. And of course we don't want that, it's going to slow down our internet. So even though the Yagi antenna did help, 
and it's made the situation a lot better. Um, it doesn't quite, it's not quite good enough just yet. So I think what I'm going to have to do is make a bigger Yagi antenna so that we can get just a bit more, maybe around minus 65, right, that would be nice. Even though we're still getting interference from that other access point on channel 13, and it's not the kind of massive improvement in signal strength that I'd hoped for, it is enough to provide a, a pretty decent speed boost. So I went from about 1 megabit, if I'm really lucky, to a very consistent 8 megabits per second, which is good enough to just watch YouTube videos, as long as they're not like 4K videos, right? That's a bit too much. But on most Wi-Fi devices, the screen is too small anyway to properly watch 4K videos, so it doesn't really matter, does it? Uh, well, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video, uh, and of course, thank you for watching.